Hello, folks. Today we're going to be doing some simple planes. And as you probably know by now, simple planes has had an update, its last and final update. Now, I'm a little late to the party because I've just been so busy doing other things, but I'm very pleased that they're that they've given another last little update to simple planes. I'm also sad to see that this game is no longer going to be under development. Although they did talk about a potential Simple Planes 2, which sounds very exciting. Okay, so you may have some projects that, like maybe a piston engine, that you'd want to utilize a propeller, but you can't use the default propellers because you need something that can mount to a part and be rotated and have a solid connection to a part. Well, to the, in this video, I'm going to be showing how to create propellers like this. So this is using wings. And these do work, they produce thrust. As you can see, I'm moving this little engine here with the thrust of this uh, of this homemade propeller. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So the first thing you need is uh, whatever shaft you're gonna mount to that's rotating, you obviously need to have that and have the whole powering system worked out beforehand, I would say. And then, uh, first we need a hub. So basically that's just the part that we're gonna mount the blades to. And then for aesthetic purposes, I'm just gonna put a nose cone on this. All right, so then for the actual blades themselves, you can use really any of these wings as long as it has uh, aerodynamic properties. For instance, if you go to stru structural stuff and go to structural panel, this has uh, no wing physics, as it says. So this would not work. Although it's the same, it's the same exact uh, shape as this one here, but this has wing physics enabled. And you can actually, once you grab this, or any part, you can just go here and... Uh, here, here's wing physics enabled, and you can set that to either true or false. So you just need basically anything that has wing physics. Once you have this, you can get it in the orientation, so... I would start, you can start in any position, but I like to put it on top first. And just so it's going... Uh, perpendicular to your shaft is where you want to have it start. So then you have this big ugly thing and then we can just go and shape this down to something a little bit more reasonable. We'll just, we'll, we'll go incredibly simple. This is the shape that we're going to be working with here. So then we'll duplicate this and rotate it. Not like that. Not like that. <laughs> but Basically, just rotate it on this plane that it's on, right around, so it's upside down. And then make sure they're lined up, which that's not lined up. That is. Okay, so now we can take this. I'm just gonna line the cockpit here so I can mirror this part over. Which when you're mirroring things, it's good to use this mirror part only because then it doesn't mirror your whole aircraft, just, just this one part that you want and it'll put it perfectly to the other side. All right, so now we have all our blades on. Now here comes the slightly more challenging part. We have to angle these blades so they can actually have an angle of attack into the air because this right now is not going to produce any air. You can spin this, as long as I didn't connect anything incorrectly. Yeah, you could. this will spin, but it doesn't produce any air, it doesn't do anything. It's purely aesthetic. That's very strange, I just realized they got rid of the... Ah, what was it called? I don't know why I'm forgetting this, but the little tool you could use to manipulate parts, move them, and change their angle and everything. 
change their rotation. I kind of wish that was still here. But I think this will, this part, this tool will work as well. So basically you go to the transform tool and then we want to take pick an axis that rotates it but like this. We want it to be rotating on its axis like a so you can give it an angle of attack. So then pick which direction it's going to be spinning. If it's going to be spinning counterclockwise well, this, this can spin in either direction, so for me it doesn't matter, but if it's going to spin clockwise and you want it to blow air backwards, then you want this to be angled like this, so as it rotates this direction towards this wheel over here, it'll be hitting the air and pushing it backwards. And that's basically the function that this is providing by angling these, is just hitting air and moving it backwards. It's not a very efficient blade design because these have no real airfoil shape. They're just kind of here, flat surfaces, but it does work. It produces air. So, and then you can set these to a different angle. And the more shallow the angle is, the better the propeller will perform at low speed. And by that, I don't mean the propeller speed in RPM, but I mean the craft speed. If it's moving at a low speed or still, you want a lower angle of attack. If you move the angle of attack too high like this, you're basically just rushing, pushing this big paddle into the air and it's gonna create a lot of drag and you're not gonna get a lot of forward thrust. But that's, that's more complicated. I'm just gonna set it at 45 degrees right now. And so then you go, if you go directly down from that, you want it to be the opposite. So instead of 45 degrees like this, so it's matching, you want it to be the exact opposite on the bottom. So yeah, 45 degrees in the other direction. Then these ones on the side, uh, you'll have to use a different axis to move them. All right, well, the issue now that we're having is uh, none of these axes move them in the way that we want. All right, here we go. So you just have to kind of fiddle with it until you can get all the axes to work correctly so you can pivot it the way you want. So you want to adjust it to 45 degrees as well, the same angle, but basically so these, if you just rotate this way, so you can see this cross section here, if you rotate this way, just right along the propeller like this, you can see the axis or this uh, profile is still the same. And if you rotate underneath, it's still the same as well. Even though if you look at it straight on, it looks like these two are opposite. If you just follow the propeller around, they are all going the same direction in relation to when it's spinning. They'll all be blowing the same direction basically. Now we just need to, we should actually be able to mirror this and then just reverse this one like so. And now this propeller should be ready to go. So uh, actually it's blowing forward right now. I don't really care which way it blows, it'll just demonstrate that this thing does in fact work. So we'll get it going at full speed, and you can see, not the most efficient thing ever, but we are moving backwards at 2 miles an hour. And it's not downhill or anything. If I move it the other direction, whoops, that apparently does not, oh there we go. Alright, if we move it the other direction, And just like that, we've switched direction. So, yeah, we are producing air. And now I'll show you how to make a more efficient propeller design. All right, so this plane has some very, some much more efficient propellers on it. What I did is I made it wider towards the top, which will give you overall more thrust because you have more surface area to push air with. And then I added these, uh, these control surfaces to it. So basically, as you get going faster, you can change your blade profile and change your angle of attack. So this is good for going slow as the plane's just starting out, uh, when you're starting out on the runway. And then as you start going faster, you increase this and increase it until you're like this, almost at a 90 degree angle to the incoming air. And this is good for when you're going faster to get the maximum efficiency because these engines don't rotate very fast, so you need really efficient blades to harness all that power that you can possibly get.
All right, so we're starting out here. Full throttle, or full speed on the on the engines. So we're still we're still at this uh, prop pitch that is stand that's normal. Now as we're taking off, I'm gonna move this up to the halfway point, so you can see now the braid pro profile is a lot more aggressive. It's it has a higher angle of attack. It's and you can see our speed is speeding up now that I did that made that adjustment. But then you reach a certain point and you stop accelerating again. So then you keep adjusting it more up higher and higher and we're speeding up more. And now we'll go to max. So you can see our our prop pitch effectively is very, very aggressive at this point. Very aggressive. And this will give us a higher top speed. But if you were to start out on the ground, not moving and put it at this prop pitch, you would, it would not work very well. You wouldn't produce nearly as much thrust. So you can see we're going 97, 98, 100 and we're keeping it pretty level and that's these engines are only spinning at about 60 60 rpm it looks like they're rotating once per second actually a little bit a little bit faster than that so maybe 100 rpm we'll say that's just a rough estimate you can turn 100 rpm which you're limited to into 100 miles an hour of forward speed by using the correct propellers all right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I taught and I taught you a little bit about how to make custom propellers and to suit your needs. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.